Hello and welcome. Today we're working on two new functions that are in Excel 365. One is the stock data types. We'll show you a couple of examples. The other one is the geography data types. We'll also show a couple of examples. Now just to begin, this is on Excel 365 under the data ribbon and it's called data types. The first two that we have are stocks and geography and then I have a preview of many more so in the future we'll have lots more data types that's pretty exciting. Welcome to my channel my name is Jeff from Finally Learn and I help you finally learn financial skills including Excel. So let's get started it's really simple and it's exciting to have this kind of functionality in Excel. So let's do companies. I have a bunch of different companies and I have intentionally made some of them capitalized some of them the full name, some of them partial name. And then F is Ford and T is uh, AT&T. So let's show you how this works. So if I highlight all of these company names, I'm going to go to the data tab. And you see I have lots of data types. Well, the first ones that we had are stocks and geography. If you have Excel 365, you likely have stocks and geography. These others are previews, so things like cities and universities and movies and medical things and food. You can, I played around with it, you can enter food and get calories and what percentage is protein and so on. So very, very fascinating. This is the future of Excel, so it's exciting. So here we have the company names and I'll do stock. And what happens is Excel found, because it looked within context, it found Apple, Cracker Barrel, the Walt Disney Company. Remember, I just had Disney, and it figured out, hey, that's the Disney, Walt Disney Company. So if you have them all highlighted, we go to this, see this little drop down, it has a little list. It has, how many is this, 25, 30 different things. So I'm just recommending a few things. Let me show you how to do the ticker symbol, if we want to know the ticker symbol for Ford Motor Company, it's F. I gave it the ticker symbol on Google. I typed in Google, but it's Alphabet Inc. And the ticker is G-O-O-G-L. We can do the last trade, highlight everything still, and we'll find the last trade time. I think I did the wrong, no, this needs to be formatted not for dollars. It needs to be formatted for time or general. Let me take the uh, formatting off. Let's do general. And this needs to be formatted for time. So the last date was 1117. So November 17th of 2020. All right, the price, once again, highlight everything. The price is going to be, this needs to be highlighted in dollars. So the most recent price here in dollars, we can highlight everything and we'll do the year incorporated. So I think it's the very last thing. So some of them are old, some of them are new. Alphabet uh, 2015 incorporated as Alphabet. Probably it existed before that, certainly. HCA Healthcare, um, it existed before that, but the current iteration, Coca-Cola 1919. The last thing I want to pull is, and you can see all the things we can pull, how many employees, the description, what currency they use if they're a, uh, in a different country. Let's pull the industry. And so there we have, for example, Coca-Cola is beverages, Netflix, software, and IT services. Fascinating, the industry that they're in. Well, let's change it to, I have index funds. I just have a list of index funds. So let's do the same thing. Let's highlight it, go to the data ribbon, and we'll do stocks. And these are all S&P 500 index funds. So let's do a couple little things on it. Let's find the ticker symbol. So if you want to look that up, there's the ticker symbol. I gave you the ticker symbol, but then it gave you the, the name, the official name. So this is Vanguard 500 index fund, the investor class, the admiral class. The Schwab 500 index fund is SWPPX. Now, the important way, if you're going to look at uh, index funds, is the expense ratio. 
So you want a lower expense ratio. It's much cheaper. So look how low some of these expense ratios are. Less than 1%, less than a tenth of a percent. So this is two one hundredths of a percent. This is five one hundredths. Some of them are really expensive. 2.3%. That's too expensive for an index fund. Let's highlight a couple more. Let's do a five-year return. So this is a the five-year return. This should be in percentages. So let me make this percentages. So here's our five-year return. And this price will be in dollars. Let's see what else we can do. For these mutual funds, it knows that these are, are uh, index funds, so it has the instrument type. It has, let me do the instrument type. It's a mutual fund. We can get rid of that. And I want to do the price. So I'm going to do the price, and the price is listed there, and there's the price. But here is your five year return. You can do uh, certainly one year return, year to date return. Um, there are all sorts of things here on index funds or mutual funds specifically. Now, this is something, the next one you probably haven't done much with, but foreign exchange lookups. So this is probably the best way now to look up foreign exchange information. So here, now on the data set, I have a new one, currency. I'm not going to show you currency. I think it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to use the stock lookup. It's going to recognize this as a financial instrument. So what is the Forex name? What is the name of the foreign exchange? I have the U.S. dollar to Canadian dollar. The U.S. dollar to the Mexican peso. The U.S. dollar to the euro. And I've done the Mexican peso twice here, I guess. Mexican peso to U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar to Mexican peso. So let's do the 52-week high, and let's do the 52-week low. So you can see the range, and let's look at the ticker symbol. Certainly we know that. The ticker symbol, we already knew that. I, I gave you that at the very beginning. And let's look at the price. So this is our price. Now on this one, let's figure out what you have. This one is kind of hard to explain sometimes, so you have to really think through it. In fact, let's look at the, the last two. The Mexican peso versus U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar, Mexican peso. So what it says is, right now, according to, and we, we might want to pull a date. Let's see if we can pull a date here. The last trade time. The last trade time was November 17th at uh, late in the evening. I think that's an hourly uh, amount. I don't know when that is, if that is uh, according to um, a certain time, like GMT or something like that. So it is um, 5.40 on Central Time. So that is that might be GMT. Uh, kind of fascinating. So I don't know about um, the actual hour and minute, but this is by date. So this is today's date, November 17th. All right, so let's look at just these last two, Mexican peso and U.S. dollar. So right now, one peso is worth about five cents, or it takes 20.29 pesos to buy one dollar. So you have to figure out which way you're looking at it. So right now, the exchange rate is depends on how you uh, look at it. It is about 20 pesos for one dollar, or one peso is about five cents. The 52 week high and low, it took, um, the low was 18 pesos for $1. The high is 25 pesos for $1. It, when it takes more pesos to buy $1, that is the, um, that is the high in, according to the US dollar Mexican peso spot rate. Okay, let's switch. Let's do geography. So I have a list of countries. I did not capitalize them. We should be able to find these easily. So let's do the highlight all the countries. Let's go to the data ribbon and do geography. And it's going to find, it's going to pull an, a search. It capitalized it. It knows the, the names of the countries. 
So let's do the abbreviation. You see there is 30 different things, 40 different things you can pull. So let's do the abbreviation. So here is um, Ireland. We don't have some, sometimes we don't have that, so we have an error. So let's do population. So population. Let's do the gross domestic product, GDP, and this is just in total dollars. I think it's going to be in um, uh, all in U.S. dollars. Let's do life expectancy. You can do lots of different things here, things you care about. So um, life expectancy here. So France, 82, is a little bit higher than Mexico, 75, the United States, 78 and a half. All right, the official name, I think I have this uh, right here, the official name. Oh, that's the official language, whoops. Let me do the official name here. Official name of the country. So it's United States of America. Mexico, I think, is uh, officially like the United Mexican States. United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So that you can get maybe a more formal name if you need it. Let's do the tax rate. So this is at the very bottom, the total tax rate. And you see some countries are more expensive. Some countries are less expensive. Ireland has one of the lower tax rates. Canada has a lower tax rate. Keep going. The currency code, if you need to look up the currency code for several countries at once, then currency code, you can figure that out. And we did this just a minute ago. USD, CAD for Canadian dollar, MXN for the Mexican peso, and so on. Then you can pull an image. So what do you think the image is? The image is the flag of all the different countries. So there's the United States flag, the Canadian flag, the Mexican flag, so on. Pretty cool. It also can do states and zip codes. We're not going to do zip codes. We'll just do states. So I have listed several states in the United States. And I have misspelled Wisconsin and Rhode Island. I know I have. So let's see what it can do, how it can handle these even misspellings. So let's go to geography. It'll look. It found, because it's within a list of states, it found Wisconsin and it corrected my spelling. It found Rhode Island and corrected my spelling. So Excel's pretty smart here. So let's do a couple little things. You can pull, once again, lots of different things, maybe 30 things here. So let's do the abbreviation. Let's do the population. Just the population. You can do the population change, population above 65 and, um, percentage. Different um, ethnicities, under age 5, under age 18, time zone, so on. So let's just do population. And it can also pull an image. I bet it pulls, I haven't done this, I bet it pulls the state flag. Yes, it does. Here's the state flag, just in case you want to know. So that is, I wonder what we can do. Um, you might be able to copy and paste. Who knows on that? And then we can pull the largest city. So largest city. And do you see how we have a busy error? And so while it's pulling information, this is all the largest city in each of the states. Now, do you see this? This also becomes, now, because it's a city, we can pull all sorts of different things here. We can find what is the county. Let's just do a county to do one more thing. So for the largest city, I think we can pull the county. So Nashville is Davidson County. Houston is Harris County. Atlanta is actually Fulton County, so that's wrong. Atlanta is in uh, DeKalb County and several different, but it should be uh, Fulton County is Atlanta, Georgia. It's not perfect, but it's a way to find information really, really fast. So this is stock data types and geography data types. All right, thanks for watching. See you on the next video.